Okay, so now let's come to the plate again and let's say the surface charge density sigma varies as kappa r squared. I can choose any kind of function that I want. Kappa is some constant and then this is saying that as the distance r gets bigger and bigger, the surface charge density is proportionally increasing as the distance squared. So more charge is concentrated on the outside of the disk, right? So uh, I could start the same way that I had last time. I can say dE is equal to kx dQ over x squared plus r squared to the 3 halves power. And then you would put dQ is sigma dA over x squared plus r squared to the 3 halves power. Now this is where it differs from the case of the uh, uniform surface charge density. In the case of the uniform, I can pull sigma out of the integral and the answer will be in terms of the sigma, so it's constant. In our case, we have to put sigma as kappa r squared. And then on top of that, you also put, have to put down the dA as 2 pi r dr. So your overall result is kx kappa r squared 2 pi r dr over x squared plus r squared to the 3 halves power, and then integrate that from zero to the radius of the disk. So the total electric field, Let's erase this and put it from up there. The total electric field comes out to be uh, every, anything that's constant we can pull out of the integral 2 pi. K is constant. Kappa is constant. And X is constant. So I'll have R squared R dr over X squared plus R squared to the 3 halves power, 0 to uh, capital R. Now in our case, I did it sort of like this on purpose because I wanted to make the integral more integrable. If, if the, this function was a little different, then you could use the TI calculator and you could actually integrate this using the TI. But in our case, I want to be able to do this uh, by simple substitution. So this one is pretty integrable. We can say let u equal x squared plus r squared, du is equal to 2 r dr, and uh, you have an extra r squared here, r squared will be u minus x squared. So what will be this integral? e total is 2 pi k kappa x, uh, r squared will be u minus x squared, r dr, uh, r dr will be du over 2, divided by, this will be u to the power 3 halves. Okay, let's continue simplifying this. The, what we could do is get rid of the 2 here and the 2 over there, and then we have the total electric field is equal to pi k kappa x integral, and then you have u over u to the 3 halves, so you will have u to the, it's like saying u to the 2 halves over u to the 3 halves minus, and then you'll have x squared over u to the 3 halves. And then you have du here, right? And so the simplification of this is pi k kappa x, and then this one will be, it's like saying u to the, uh, 2 halves minus 3 halves is u to the minus half, minus, and then this one is, um, well, x and u don't actually mix, so they're actually separate things. So x squared stays x squared, and then you have u to the minus uh, 3 halves, du. And then the integral of u to the minus half is equal to what? u to the half over half u to the half over half, and then the integral of u to the minus 3 halves is u to the minus half over minus half, u to the minus half over minus half. So the minus and the minus becomes a plus, and the 2 goes to the numerator, and we can actually factor the 2 out, and then you'll end up with the extra 2 again here. So e total is equal to 2 pi k kappa x, and then this 2 became this 2, and then you have, now we could put down what u was, u was x squared plus r squared, so x squared plus r squared, 
to the one half power plus x squared. Okay, that's from here. And then you'll have over, and then this will be x squared plus r squared to the one half. Now we gotta go zero to big R. Okay? So this is our final integral. Okay? So then you bring it over here. Two pi k kappa x. And then when you put r, what, are, what variable are we putting in r for? The little r, right? So you will have x squared plus r squared to the one half, right? That goes in here. And then it also goes in here. Plus x squared over x squared plus r squared to the one half. Now you put in zero for the r, okay? So let's erase this. Minus, and then zero goes over here. So you'll just end up with x to the, just x basically. X squared one half cancels out. And then when you put in zero here, minus zero here, so you'll have X squared over what? And then zero here, basically this will cancel, and then you'll have X squared one half is just X, right? And what is that equal to? Well, uh, the X and the X squared will cancel. And then you have minus X minus X, which is equal to what? minus 2x. So that is our final answer. E total is equal to 2 pi k kappa x, x squared plus r squared to the 1 half plus x squared over x squared plus r squared to the 1 half minus 2x. In terms of unit wise, does this work out? Well, this is in units of meter squared, meter squared to 1 half, that's meter, meter squared, over, this is also a meter, so this is also a meter, and this is also a meter, right? So they should all be unit, uh, they should all agree in terms of units as well, okay? The last thing to do is to say, what is kappa, right? So I say Q is equal to DQ, which equals to sigma DA, integral, integral, and then sigma was kappa R squared, and then dA was 2 pi r dr from 0 to r. Every time you have non-uniform charge density, you're always having to find the relationship between that constant kappa and your total charge of whether it be your disk or whether it be a rod, okay? So then you're going to have here q is equal to 2 pi kappa integral r cubed dr 0 to r. 2 pi kappa, and then the integral of that is r to the fourth over 4, okay? Therefore, this simplifies to what? Pi over 2 kappa r to the fourth, and therefore kappa is equal to 2q over pi r to the fourth, right? So it's double the charge of whatever the charge of the disk is, divided by pi r to the fourth. Now you substitute that into this kappa, okay? So you have 2q over pi r to the fourth, pi, pi cancels. You have e total is equal to, and then two and the two becomes four. So four k q over, r to the fourth x times x squared plus r squared to the one half uh, plus x squared over x squared plus r squared to the one half minus two x. That is the electric field of a disk of non-uniform charge density where the uh, sigma changes as a function of r squared. If you want to find the limit of this as x goes to zero, you could also do that. You could say limit as x goes to zero, and then you will have 4kq x over r to the fourth 
and then when you put zero here, you will just have r squared to the one half. So this will be negligible compared to that. So you'll just have r, and then this one will be x squared over, and then this one will just be negligible compared to that. So you'll just have basically this will disappear, and you'll just have x squared over r minus 2x, okay? But if x is approaching 0, x squared is smaller than 2x, right? Therefore, it's even negligible compared to the 2x, right? So this is much, uh, this term x squared is negligible to that term because x is very small. So we could even get rid of this and you'll just have limit as x goes to 0, 4kq x over r to the fourth r minus 2x. Now I could even distribute this in, so you'll have what? Limit as x goes to 0, uh, so you'll have 4kqx, r will cancel this one, it'll get r cubed minus and then 8kqx squared over r to the fourth. Now I could make even one more argument. I can say that x squared is negligible compared to that x. So I could even get rid of this one. So what will you have? Limit of a disk when x approaches 0. This one actually does approach 0. Okay. So you'll have 4kqx over r cubed. Okay. Notice it resembles quite a bit the electric field of a ring. near the center, which was kq over r cubed x, right? But it's four times stronger than that because this is actually a disk, right? Now you might ask yourself the question, why did this approach zero when x um, uh, approaches zero? Why did the regular disk not approach zero? Well, what ended up happening essentially, density, so the electric field was more or less straight because charge was distributed uniformly. This one, the charge was distributed much more strongly towards the ends, and at the center, the, there was almost no charge. Remember, sigma was kappa r squared. When r is zero, what happens? The sigma is zero. So at the beginning, at the middle, there's almost no charge. And as you go outward, most of the charge is concentrated outward, right? Like this. Towards the middle, there's almost no charge. So the electric field configuration of this is stronger than a ring, but in the middle, it's not as strong as a regular uh, disk, right? So the electric fields look like this. And then in the middle, as you approach x is zero, the electric field is zero, similar to a ring, right? So there's material there, but there's very little charge at the center. So now you see how to approach uh, rings, plates, and how to find the electric field of both of them and how to see what their behavior is, okay? Thank you very much.